Thank you. Thank you. Thank you guys so much for coming out in the five minutes between a pandemic and World War Three. Yeah. yeah, it was a good week, right? We had a good couple days there. It was good. And I'm glad to see New York is not dead, right? Yeah. We've tried. We've tried. <laughs> Keeps coming back like Crocs. <laughs> you can't kill what doesn't want to die. <laughs> New York will never be dead because there's things you can do here you can't do anywhere else in the world, right? I kicked a pigeon. <laughs> yeah! Arr! I don't think you can do that in Idaho. I don't know. Well, you can, but it's their dinner. <laughs> what, do we have people from Idaho here? <laughs> And there's things you see here you can't see anywhere else in the world. On my way over here tonight, I saw a woman chasing after a rat with a butterfly net. And she looked at me and went, gonna eat like kings tonight. And I was like, God, if I saw that in Ohio, I'd call the cops. But I see that here and I just go, oh. She's keto. Good for her, no net carbs. You know, city's coming back to life again, though I was in Central Park. I love Central Park. It is the one place you can see people doing meth and Tai Chi. <laughs> and you can't tell the difference. It's like, what's that guy doing? Standing crane? No, no, he's just been trying to pick up that napkin for the last three days. Good for him. Oh, it's not in good shape, though. Right now, I feel like the city is like Keith Richards. It's not dead, but it doesn't look good. <laughs> I feel like I'm walking around the city like I'm a character in a Batman movie. Like, somebody's got to clean up this town. This is a mess. Ugh. And we lost a lot of people during the pandemic. And we're not getting them back, you guys, because, you know, they're going somewhere else, and they're going to realize in other places, people are happy. Yeah, they ain't coming back. This is why New York City people could never watch House Hunters. Because there's always that one chick that's like, I don't know, only three bathrooms. <laughs> Everyone who lives in New York is like, I slept inside my roommate last night. <laughs> it's the only place I get Wi-Fi. <laughs> so yeah, we lost a lot of people. Mainly the ones that won't stab you. And we've kept the ones that will. <laughs> That's why I'm always happy when I see a guy smoking crack on the street. I'm like, well, at least his hands are full. You know? <laughs> but what we lack in safety, we always make up for in sound bites. Isn't that the best thing about living in New York is the stuff you overhear on the street? That is like our primary export. I heard two guys talking the other day and one of them goes, so did you have to show your whole ass? <laughs> and the other one went, yeah. <laughs> You can't win best ass unless you show it. And I thought that should be our new slogan. New York City, you can't win best ass unless you show it, baby. <laughs> By the way, that guy was Andrew Cuomo. I do know the city is healing because I got cat called in my mask. So yeah, it's good to know it was never about my face. <laughs> I love a mask cat color, though. That's a guy that has no standards. That guy sees 130 or head and goes, eh, good enough. <laughs> some guys are ass men and some like boobs, but this was a forehead guy. <laughs> I appreciate that. I work hard on my eyebrows, you know. It's refreshing to walk past a guy and have him say, yeah, show me your expressions, girl. <laughs> <laughs> My cat calls have always been garbage, though. Uh, someone once told me I reminded them of Eleanor Roosevelt. Yeah. Yeah. You ever see a picture of him? That guy's not hot. And uh, I was running down the street one day, and a guy went, Redhead! Running! That's it. That's all. Like, that's not cat calling. That's narrating. Like, I found the Morgan Freeman of cat callers. I feel like that might be cat calling in the Me Too era. You know, like guys want to say something, but they don't want to get arrested, so they can only scream facts at you. <laughs> They're like, blue shirt, brown pants, blonde hair, mailbox, Applebee's, end train. <laughs> Just, oh, I'm sorting out, you know? Here's a tip, guys. If you want a cat call, here's all you have to say. I appreciate the money it takes to look baseline presentable. <laughs> right? 
It's a long sentence, but women will appreciate it because it's very expensive to be a female. I have a different moisturizer for each body part. I'm broke, but I'm smooth. Mm. And all guy products are 10 in one and take care of everything. It's like shampoo, conditioner, motor oil. <laughs> Face wash, barbecue sauce, your mother's love, you know? The body wash is a big difference. Women always get a food. We get mango, <laughs> coconut, cake batter. <laughs> Guys don't get that. There's no ham and cheese body wash, you know? Guys' body wash is angry. Arctic blast! <laughs> Phoenix rising! <laughs> Dick smack! <laughs> and that's how you start your day? <laughs> You're in the bathtub like, oh, I love this new Old Spice throat punch! <laughs> I'm so angry. Uh, I want to thank you guys for coming out today, by the way. Yes, thank you, yes. No, because it's Feng Shui Awareness Day. This is an actual holiday that's on a calendar somewhere. Do you know that? It's Feng Shui Awareness Day. So in honor of Marie Kondo, uh, I held everything in my house, and if it didn't spark joy, I threw it out. So all that's left is a bottle of gin. <laughs> this is ridiculous. We're making up garbage holidays to get us through to the big holidays. My favorite holiday is in October, and I'm not talking about Halloween. I'm talking about National No Bra Day. That is right, that's a holiday. They picked one of the coldest months of the year <laughs> to have National No Bra Day. I love it. Joke's on them, though, because when you're an A cup, every day is National No Bra Day. <laughs> but thank you. Yes, the company that makes my bras is called Sweet Nothings. <laughs> True. I wore a strapless bra once, I exhaled, and it became a belt. So I was thrilled when Starbucks came out with the flat white. I'm like, oh my God, that's my nickname. <laughs> I had a mammogram last month and the tech was taking the scan. She goes, your breast tissue is very dense. I'm like, well, that's because it's bone. <laughs> it took her six tries to get me in the clamp. I was like, use a Xerox machine. We'll be here all night. And I'm fine with it. You know, I, I like to see my A cups is half full. Proud. <laughs> Oh, uh, we're in that awesome in-between time before it gets too swampy and gross in New York. You know, I don't do summer. Summer is not my season. Summer's a ginger winter. That is when my people go inside. Because I don't tan, I vaporize. You ever walk down the street and you'll see like a flip-flop or a hair tie? That was a ginger. <laughs> Say a prayer, the sun hit our skin, we evaporated. That's why I never understood Game of Thrones. Just the whitest people in the world running around going, winter is coming, winter is coming. I'm like, well, that's your season. You know? Go inside, fuck your sister. Enjoy yourself. And I am Boston white too, which is, that's, that's an extreme white. You know, that's a lot of white. I did not know that Boston wasn't diverse until I moved here. And then I realized, I was like, oh, in Boston, diversity is white people of different heights. Oh. Audit. So my people don't do the beaches, you know. Last time I went to the beach, I put on my SPF 5000. That's the kind that's so thick, you gotta put it on with a knife. And it never blends into your skin, so I was just on the beach, all white with red hair. Kid comes running up, he's like, hey mister, will you make me a balloon animal? So I did, I didn't want to let him down, you know? Someone invited me to a nude beach. The Irish are not a naked people. You guys, this is why we're not killing the porn scene right now. No one wants to download Brian McFinnigan and touch my shillelagh. It's because there's nothing hot about seeing a circulatory system, you know? You watch an Irish porn like, God, I can see that guy's liver through his stomach. His heart is really beating. What is that, two x-rays? We don't do the naked. The Irish people go to great lengths to not be naked. Like if you're seeing an Irishman naked, it's probably his autopsy. <laughs> but they opened up a nude beach in Ireland. How does the tourism board sell that? Welcome to Ireland. Hey, you wanna see something gross? <laughs> How do you tell where the sand ends and the people begin? 
Do you look for the nipples? I have questions. I don't get naked people. I don't get it. My friend said that she grew up going to a nudist camp with her parents. I was like, was this before they arrested people? What was, what year did this happen? She said, it's like any other camp. You know, they have activities. I was like, is one of them therapy? Because if I'm naked with my parents, my only activity is crying. I don't need the visual of my father on horseback like this is a wonderful vacation we're having here. This lovely time, like, you know, just rock climbing. I need a spotter. Can I get a spotter? Uh, you guys, dad asked me to play cornhole. <laughs> Camp scarred for life, man. So now I live in Jersey because things are going well. And uh, I moved down the street from a Chili's because things are going real well. And in the beginning of the pandemic, Chili's put out a sign. Chili's is concerned about your health. <laughs> Now, really? Like, you have, a, you have a salad that has the word explosion in it. <laughs> and the second part of the sign says, and Chili's is concerned about public safety. That's why we're offering curbside margaritas! Because <laughs> nothing says health and safety like tequila delivered to the window of your Camry. <laughs> Feeling good in the neighborhood. <laughs> like, if Chili's was a sound, it would be, ah! Oh! It also explains why the state bird of New Jersey should be a dented Toyota Corolla. It is a garbage state. People are using their cars like battering rams out there. But whenever I drive, I always put on Waze, the Waze app. You guys know Waze, right? I love getting directions from a cartoon. It's fun. Because Google Maps is like getting directions from your grandfather, you know? It's like, oh, you want to go to Maine? Well, let's see, that'll take you four hours by motor car. <laughs> Eight by stagecoach. And if you want to walk, well, you should have left yesterday. But Waze is like getting directions from your friend in the back seat whose edible just kicked in. <laughs> There's a Dunkin' Donuts 2.5 miles from here. Do you want me to take you there? I can take you there. <laughs> You just get off this exit and you drive through some guy's kitchen. <laughs> oh God, there's cops in 500 feet. <laughs> Are these still there? 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 It's like, sorry guys, it would have been here hours ago, but Waze has been trying to pick up that napkin for the last three days. Ah, <laughs> uh, edibles, edibles. I don't do the weed. Do we have weed people here? There we go. That, that was the best weed sound that we could ever hope for. <laughs> <laughs> Sounded like a dolphin. Oh, uh, yeah. I don't do the weed, but you can't say that to the weed people because they always act like matchmakers. They're like, you just haven't found the right strain. <laughs> Sorry you had a bad time with indica, but have you met my friend Sativa? He's totally chill and he tastes great in a cookie. Never in the history of edibles has anyone ever taken an edible and gone, you know what, that was the perfect amount. <laughs> it was all I needed. It's genius. Just one head of a gummy bear and I'm right there. I'm way too nervous to take them. The one time I took them, I became paranoid. I'm like, everybody's talking about me. But then the next day I became paranoid. I'm like, nobody's talking about me. <laughs> That's a rough place to be in. Uh, I drink because uh, I just want to make my ancestors proud. Yes, I come from a long line of drinkers. My family tree was made into a whiskey barrel. And uh, our family crest is just a stack of red Solo cups and guy puking in a Kangol hat that says, the Celtics lost. <laughs> that guy gets it. Yeah. <laughs> but the weed people have community, you know? It's like they have a representative. They have Snoop Dogg. What do the drinkers have? The Kennedys? That sucks. <laughs> and I have a friend who's a mixologist. That's the closest thing that we have in this day and age to witches. 
a mixologist. They're always stirring something and listing you the ingredients. They're like, this is elderflower gin with hibiscus syrup and the semen of a righteous man. You're like, oh, just have a gin and tonic. Ah, hold the eye of Newt. Damn it. I like drinking. I hate it when people ruin the fun for you by telling you how many calories is in something, though. They're like, do you know how many calories is in that glass of wine? I'm like, yeah, that's why I didn't eat all day. It's called drinking responsibly, okay? <laughs> Speaking of drinking, uh, I just celebrated my 10-year wedding anniversary. Yay! Yay! I renewed the lease. I did. My husband is cute. He's, he's short, he's bald, his knees don't bend. It's like I'm married a gingerbread man. <laughs> but I like that. I can take him, you know? Marry somebody shorter, because I watch a lot of true crime. I know it's always the spouse that does it, and they can't do it if they can't reach the knives. <laughs> you know? And he's 10 years older than me, so we met on Ancestry.com. <laughs> it's nice. No, actually, we met the old-fashioned way. Drunk. We actually got engaged in a whiskey bar. He got down on one knee, stuck to the floor. I said, yes, he puked. We've been living happily ever since. But, uh, you know, we got a little too comfortable during the pandemic. You know, we finally started going to the bathroom with the door open in public. <laughs> and we only ever went to the doctor's office for like six straight months. So I just started grabbing pamphlets for inspiration for the conversation. I'd come home and be like, so you want to talk about mesothelioma <laughs> how about mild to severe plaque psoriasis no nothing we had to play games to keep things spicy you know games like does this look like cancer that was a fun game games like stop breathing like that we love that game <laughs> and oh you're still here favorite game. Made me realize married people don't write love songs. If you're hearing a love song, no married person wrote that. Because every love song is like, love you, want to touch you, want to be around you. If married people wrote love songs, it'd be, why can't you flush the toilet twice? You're an animal. <laughs> and that doesn't sell albums, you know? It's not like Grammy of the Year goes to Usher for his song, Why Did You Buy So Many Goddamn Potatoes, Girl. <laughs> doesn't fly off the shelves, you know? Uh, my husband's in The Lion King on Broadway, and, uh, oh, don't get excited, I married the warthog. Yeah, I had a whole safari to choose from, and I'm like, I'll take the pig. You know what it's like to call your mother and tell her you're bringing home a pig and she's not surprised? It's awesome. Hakuna Matata, you know, what you gonna do? Uh, he is, he's, he's in The Lion King. And, but it's hard for me to be a comic and a wife because I never know which one to be, you know? <laughs> and he came home from the show one time and he goes, I think I need to go to the ER. I hurt myself in the show. I think I torqued my ball. <laughs> Am I a comic or a wife? Am I a comic or a wife? Am I a comic or a wife? So I split the difference and I was like, fine, you know what? Let's go to the ER. Let's get the ball rolling. <laughs> we got to the ER and it was packed. I'm like, oh, this is nuts. <laughs> Can't wait to go home and hit the sack. He got irked. I'm like, don't get testy with me. And then the nurse comes in and she goes, you have a kidney stone. We need you to see one of our urologists, Dr. Seaman or Dr. Wang. <laughs> True story. I was like, am I a comic or a wife? Am I a comic or a wife? Am I a comic or a wife? I said, Seaman or Wang, how do I pick? You can't have one without the other. <laughs> On the one hand, you got Wang and he is solid as a rock. You can't beat Wang. <laughs> But on the other hand, you got semen. And with semen, you're covered. <laughs> yeah, I'll take semen. Is he coming? <laughs> semen was old, too. He was old semen. My husband likes old doctors. I don't. He's like, that's a doctor who has experience. And I'm like, no, give me a young doctor who is playing 12 hours of video games, please. Because that means they're getting that hand-eye coordination. That's important to me. If you're going up my ass with the camera, I want to know that you've been playing 12 hours of Call of Duty. 
Yes, I said duty. I don't care if you have a degree from Harvard in 1983. I want to know that you have a PS5 in 2022. <laughs> the important thing. So we live in Jersey. We bought a house. We're homeowners. Yeah. And then we found out someone died in it, so we're selling a house. I, I can't. I can't with a ghost and a mortgage. That's like one too many things. That's a lot. The realtor left that out. I mean, what's she really going to say? She's like, this is a five-bed, four-bath, two-ghost house. <laughs> they don't put that on Zillow. They're like, you know, sometimes the walls bleed, but the carpets are scotch-guarded. It's going to be... <laughs> And here's an open floor plan so you can be in the kitchen making dinner and look out over the tribal burial ground. I did think it was weird at the signing that she handed me a Ouija board. That was the only tell. I have a weird fear of ghosts. I feel like they're gonna possess me. It's a strange thing. Two things my friends know about me. I'm scared of ghosts and I have bad self-esteem. So I'm afraid a ghost will enter my body, but I'm more afraid he'll be disappointed. <laughs> I feel like he's going to get in there and look around and be like, this looks nothing like the brochure. The, the liver's barely working. There's only one bathroom. I give this body less than one star. And like, the only thing worse than a ghost is a bad Yelp review. You know what I mean? And uh, we don't have kids. We live in the suburbs. We don't have kids. I don't want to ruin my boyish figure. I don't. You know, kids are like crop tops. They're cute, small, not for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> They just don't work on me. Some of us are just meant to be a drunk aunt. That's it. It's like, the world needs drunk aunts, right? Who else is going to tell you you're adopted? <laughs> drunk aunts are the truth tellers of the family. I'm just like, Bob, drop a bomb and walk away. I'm a drunk aunt. You know? Uh, the children, I don't do... But, you know, I have two dogs. That's fine. And they're very cute. My friend says that I should start their own Instagram page. And I'm like, you know what? That's, that's overkill. I just finished breastfeeding them. Let's just take this one step at a time, you know? But it's weird to live in the suburbs with all these women who have kids and they want to talk about the kids. So I just talk to these women about my dogs like they're kids. So they're like, it's so hard to find good daycare. And I'm like, I know, that's why I keep mine in crates. <laughs> Is that a problem? But yes, I am from Boston originally. And I don't have the accent, but I love the accent. I do. I love the Boston accent. It doesn't work everywhere, though, does it? Like, we have some of the best hospitals in the world, but that's not who you want when you go into the ER. The guy who's like, your fucking femur's broken, kids. You got a wicked huge tumor. It's bigger than a crawl over dunks. And you're like, no, I'm good, I'm good. I do. I love. I love it. And I'm I'm blue collar Boston. I come from blue collar stock. A lot of first responders. You know, like nurses and military and firefighters. And there's me, a non responder. I don't know how it happened. I'm an overreactor non responder, which means I'll panic and then I won't do shit. That's a bad combo. That's not who you call nine one one expecting on the other side when they're like, I've been shot. I'm like, Oh my god, you should go to a hospital. You're gonna die. <laughs> Go there, ask for my cousin. If you live, come back. I'll make fun of you. <laughs> I knew I was not meant for that life when someone hit my car one time and ran, and I got the license plate, and I went to call it in, but I couldn't think in that panic of the words that go with the letters. You know, like A is an apple, V is in Victor. For some reason, I went, P is an pterodactyl. <laughs> That's not good, you know? If I were a cop, I'd be like, there's been a hit and run on the corner of Riverside in Maine in pursuit of a black Nissan Pathfinder. License plate, D as in Daniel Day-Lewis. Uh, Q as in Queer Eye for the Straight Guy. Not the uh, original the reboot, but the original. Is C as in Cardi B, not B, but as C as in Cardi. L as in Lemony Snicket's a series of unfortunate events, and U as an umbrella. Ella, Ella, eh, 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 my umbrella. Oh, shit, he got away. He got away. <laughs> That's why I'm not a cop. <laughs> You're welcome, America. <laughs> so no, I don't have the accent. Whenever anyone, every, anyone asks me where I'm from, I just say the 1940s. <laughs> because you've heard me now, right? It's weird. I, I, I don't know why I talk like this. I'm a girl Friday. <laughs> I sound like I should be reading a newsreel in front of war movies. <laughs> it's strange. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's, it is weird. I've always talked like this, too. Even, even when I was a kid, you know? That's a weird kid. You're like, did that child just call me a palooka? 
<laughs> I was the only fifth grader who made my own bathtub gin, you know? And when we won the series, the Sox won the series, everybody in my family's in the streets like, the Sox won the freaking series! And I'm in the middle going, well, you're the bee's knees, aren't you? Ooh. Look at them boys winning that ball game. <laughs> but this voice works in certain places and I have been hired to do audiobooks and specifically Harlequin romance novels. <laughs> yeah! You guys, Harlequin is French for shitty porn. <laughs> It's graphic trash, that's what that is. And they ask when you first start working there if you want to go under an alias. And I'm like, yeah, Bitsy McTitties. <laughs> and they said, that's already taken. <laughs> so I said, fine, Barbara Bush. <laughs> and it's really competitive, so I want to set myself apart from other narrators and add sound effects, like a Foley artist, you know? <laughs> he entered her. And she came with a thundering crash. <laughs> yes, some people in here have slept with a clown. I see you. I acknowledge you. I always thought the demographic would be middle-aged women, you know, for these kinds of things because of Fifty Shades of Grey. Which, look, I'm not going to lie. I saw Fifty Shades of Grey in the movie theater. My favorite line was when she said, show me how bad it can get. And I was like, sit in my seat. <laughs> it was garbage. But it's truckers. So think about that the next time you click buy now on Amazon. These guys who should be keeping their hands firmly at the 10 and the 2, they all have their hand on the 6. <laughs> and I'm not saying <laughs> that I'm good at my job, but there was a five-car pileup on Route 95 the other day, and I just want to believe that that's my work. <laughs> You're welcome, Canadian convoy. I went back up to Boston to visit my folks. They're getting real weird, which is fun. Uh, my mother gets off on weather now. Weather is her porn. And the bigger the disaster, the hotter she gets. She is a MILF. She's a mother in love with floods. I don't know why she loves weather like this. She talks about it. She's filthy. You know, she's like, it's hot for a blizzard. She's like, oh, it's been so long since I've had a backdoor cold front. <laughs> She has no idea she sounds filthy when she talks about it. And I called her when we had a snow a couple months ago, and she was like, well, I'm supposed to get 12 inches tonight, but I've heard that before. I'll be lucky if I get six. I just hope it's not too wet. I don't want your father to throw his back out again. Last time I let him out there, he was getting blown all over the place. Just blown up and down the street. Oh, the spread is coming and I'm ready to get plowed. <laughs> and I'm on the other side like, God, Ma, that's a lot to take in. She's like, I know, 12 inches. There should be a pay site for people like my mother called Only Fahrenheit's. <laughs> Just people like, you like tsunamis? Smash that subscribe button. Yeah! Uh, my father just started texting because his carrier pigeon finally died. Uh, he had to start texting because I wouldn't reply to his faxes. It's 2022. It's time to learn how to text, you know? But he thinks he's getting charged by the word. So all of his texts look like they're a telegram. You know, it's like, can't talk, stop. At work, stop. We'll call later, stop. Yours, Jay McGuire. <laughs> P.S. War is hell. <laughs> and I said, oh, thank God you signed this. Uh, I thought it was from Ben Franklin. You know? <laughs> there should be parental controls on social media the other way around. We should be able to control what they do. Because at first it's cute when they join these things. You know, it's like watching a toddler try to walk and fall. It's like, oh, she tried to update her status, but she wrote under someone else's picture. <gasps> Isn't that the cutest thing you've ever seen? <laughs> But then they start to learn, and it's like that scene in Jurassic Park where the raptors figure out how to open doors. Uh, she's learned how to tag me in pictures. Clever girl. I think it's the job of the next generation to make fun 
of the current generation and how they cannot handle technology. Like, oh, these people actually fought in World War II and they're like, but they don't understand what an eggplant means. <laughs> and I know millennials get a lot of crap, so let's take a dump on Gen Z for a minute, shall we? Yes, come along with me. Uh, I know technology is changing us because I was, I was seated next to uh, this girl on a flight. Remember flying? That was fun. <laughs> I flew spirit because I'm a risk taker, Dennis. Yes! They were one day away from asking us to push that plane down the runway. <laughs> you know it's good when the safety demo starts with remove duct tape from doors. <laughs> and a woman got on with a baby and a dog. I'm like, she's gonna have to check one of those. You know? So I was seated next to this chick and uh, I knew that she was Gen Z because she wore the neck pillow through security. And... Uh, <laughs> I heard her on the phone with a friend, and in the future, I realize we only need vowels, because this is what she sounded like. <laughs> and that's the future. She'll be defending you in a court of law one day, going, yeah, not yet. Sometimes why? <laughs> When she met up with her friend, the two of them together sounded like NASCAR. It's like, oh my God, yeah, 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 Tick tock! What I'm saying is, let's let the ice caps melt, you guys. Let's just, let's just float away on a sea of open vowels. Just, oh my God, uncut gems. <laughs> Ah, uh, gluten free. I wish I could be gluten free. I, I am not rich enough to have dietary restrictions. Oh, the more ingredients they take out, the more expensive it becomes. I did see a brownie the other day that was sugar free, dairy free, fat free, nut free, and I thought, oh God, just shit in my mouth. <laughs> At least it'll be organic, you know? I did try doing the Whole30. That's when you take out sugar, grain, alcohol, dairy. It's supposed to teach you something about yourself. And the only thing that I learned is that without those four things, I am a bitch. <laughs> I tried being vegan once. Doesn't go with my body, though. It's not good for an Irish stomach. You know, we don't like to be challenged. Everything is boiled. If my mother had her, if my mother had her own restaurant, it would be called a taste of nothing. <laughs> And I just, so I tried being vegan and you know, I left this one place and they were like, thank you for coming. Remember, it's not food, it's a movement. And I was like, oh my God, he's right. It's <laughs> <sighs> amazing. I did discover my new favorite supermarket though, Aldi. Yeah. Yes. If you don't know Aldi, they only sell generic food. Their tagline should be Aldi. This doesn't taste right. <laughs> but I didn't know that when I first walked in there until I went to go pick up ketchup and I read the label. It was like, Hank? <laughs> you know, everything is off by one letter in there. Like, spap? <laughs> the hell is creamed corf? <laughs> Even the produce was strange. It was like five bucks for a pint of strawberries. <laughs> I don't know what bananas are, but I'll take a bunch. It's lawless in there. They don't have shopping bags, so it looks like people are looting. <laughs> They're just running out of there with their arms full of pretzels and rice craspies. <laughs> Going, bring the car around. I don't want to drop my screases peanut bunker cups. <laughs> it's a weird place. I don't want to go back, but they're the only ones who sell scattles. <laughs> Oh, so I hope you guys had a good apocalypse, right? That was it, right? This was the apocalypse, I assume. I mean, if this was the apocalypse, there was a lot more sitting than I thought there would be. <laughs> a lot more TV. I watch a lot of apocalypse movies. I don't remember anyone ever getting DoorDash and binging hacks. <laughs> I think we got off easy. But I did think that apocalypse would be, like, sexier. You know, Hollywood lied to us. I thought I was going to look like Charlize Theron in Mad Max. Not Seth Rogen in everything ever. 
I thought it would be fighting zombies, not high blood pressure, you know? But now everyone has an anxiety disorder. Welcome. Some of us have been here a while. Welcome to anxiety. I'm showing them around like they're new. I'm like, that's your crying corner. Here's your weighted blanket. If you need anything, I'm going to be scrubbing the skin off my fingers till I look like I'm in the body's exhibit. Yeah! <laughs> anxiety! I'm a kid of the 80s. We invented anxiety because we grew up playing Operation. <laughs> a board game where children have to operate on a man who's wide awake. <laughs> and no one thought that'd be a problem? I talk to kids now like I'm a salty war vet. I'm like, you think video games are violent? You ever remove a man's heart with a pair of tweezers? <laughs> While he stared at you? Going, ah! <laughs> ah! What guy walked into Hasbro and said, you know what kids love? Surgery. <laughs> you know what else they love? Being electrocuted. <laughs> we'll put this on every toy shelf and then we'll invent Xanax. We'll be millionaires! <laughs> that game messed us up. That was my introduction to anatomy. For 20 years, I called my crotch my bread basket. <laughs> it got so stressful, me and my brother would just take out the batteries and play autopsy. <laughs> Highly recommend it. Before the end of the world, I have to say, I think the next Olympics is gonna be pretty awkward, you guys. <laughs> pretty awkward. But let's be honest, the last Olympics was pretty bad too. Everyone was doping and nobody cared. The Olympics committee became that cool mom that's like, we know you guys are gonna do this. We just want you to do it in a safe house. <laughs> We're the Olympics committee cool mom. So the big story that got buried in all of this doping scandal stuff was that all the Olympians were hooking up so much they just kept giving them condoms. Because God forbid the fastest and strongest humans procreate. <laughs> we should give out condoms at Arby's. <laughs> Jets games, you know? <laughs> Go to Walmart, make it rain. Not the Olympians, man. We should be giving them porn. They should be getting a welcome sex basket. I feel like at this point, we should add hate as an Olympic sport because that's what we're so good at, right? We're so good at hating. Oh, if we could just agree on the stuff we'd hate, we'd come back together as a world, I think. We all hate the word moist. But here's the thing. We do need it to describe baked goods because no one wants to eat a damp muffin. We hate bathroom attendants. I have never once walked into a bathroom and thought, God, I hope there's a stranger in there waiting for me. <laughs> <laughs> I cannot get that paper towel on my own. <laughs> I hate that you have to tip them. I feel like that's hush money. <laughs> I slip the girl a five and I'm like, forget everything you heard in here. We hate people who post inspirational quotes online because they're the least inspiring people. Always the ones that do that. You must do one thing a day that scares you. You mean like get a job, Dave? <laughs> You're posting this from your mother's basement. You're not Eleanor Roosevelt, you know? That guy was hot. I hate pillows with inspirational sayings on them. She believed she could, so she did. I've never been in the middle of a meltdown and been like, I can't go on, you guys, I can't. That pillow says I can. <laughs> Those things are aimed at women. There is no guy in home goods going, Carl, get over here, a pillow that says namaste in bed. Uh -huh. Stop letting cushion tell you how to feel. If you were a female who is buying a pillow that says live, laugh, love, or it's wine o'clock, or families are like fudge, mostly sweet, but with a lot of nuts, you are setting the movement back. <laughs> Eleanor Roosevelt is rolling over in his grave. Because women have been doing awesome 
some stuff through history. I don't think they had inspirational accessories. You know, Mother Teresa did not have a T-shirt that said spiritual gangster. <laughs> and they don't talk like that. Harriet Tubman didn't lead the slaves through the Underground Railroad and turn to them and say, shh, we are way too blessed to be stressed. <laughs> Whoever created inspirational pillows should be smothered with their own pillow. <laughs> I'll do it, and the last words they'll hear, I believed I could, so I did! <laughs> Here's the only thing we can all agree on as a people. Sweet Caroline. Ba, ba, ba. Religions don't have that kind of organization. <laughs> cooler would Catholicism be if they were like body of Christ bah, bah, bah. <laughs> people get so excited to make that noise and it's universal you could go anywhere you go to France you go sweet Caroline a guy with a beret will drop out of the sky and be like Le bah, bah, bah. <laughs> and I am from Boston please it was taught in schools <laughs> I learned it before I learned the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> my parents loved it so much, my middle name is Caroline. <laughs> Which is better than my brother's middle name. Ba, ba, ba. <laughs> so we gotta turn off the news, you guys. Turn on something more relaxing. Serial killer documentaries. <laughs> Netflix waited until we were trapped inside the house with our families to release every serial killer show that's ever been made. I was like, is this the DIY network? Don't cross me. I've watched 10 hours of John Wayne Gacy and I've learned some things. Seriously, do you ever watch so many serial killer shows you think, I could do this? I just need a Home Depot card. Whenever anyone's like, what did you learn during the pandemic? I'm like, how to dispose of a body. <laughs> I find them weirdly relaxing, and I think it's because the guy is always so organized. You know, it's like, there's a guy who has his own duct tape. <laughs> his own plastic sheeting. He cleans up after himself, you know? <laughs> My husband left a carton of milk in the fridge so long, the kid on the side was found. <laughs> so I appreciate that could not watch the news. I could only watch it if it was read to me by a British person. Because isn't it easier getting bad news from someone with a British accent? It is. I mean, we trust a British person. Americans put them in movies to play Americans. How many times are you like, that was a great movie of John Gotti. And then you see that guy in an interview and he's like, well, Bob's your uncle, bangers and mash, blah, blah, blah. And you're like, what? why are we outsourcing this too? <laughs> I trust a British person too much. I would have been bad for us in the Revolutionary War. They would ride through town going, the British are coming, the British are coming. And I'd be like, oh, oh, thank God, they'll tell us what to do. <laughs> you could tell me an asteroid is gonna hit the earth, I'm fine if you sound like Mary Poppins, you know? <laughs> There's a pandemic that's coming to kill half the world. And the other half will be unemployed. <laughs> Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious The next two years of all your lives will only be atrocious Half of us could not agree on who should be the potus Supercalifragilisticexpialidocious Hum diddle lily, we're all gonna die Hum diddle lily, we're all gonna die Isn't that better? Thank you guys so much For coming out tonight I am Aaron McGuire Have a great night <laughs>